Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with Josh Taylor. Last time I did an on-camera interview with you, it was in Vegas and he became undisputed champion of the world. Then we had a little after party. A little after party. A wee after party. A wee after, a wee party. after party. Um, yeah, news broke that you, you've you got an injury to your knee and uh, your, Jack, your, your mandatory fight with Jack Carroll has been postponed till February. Just tell me about your knee and uh, how's it feeling right now? It's not too bad, you know... Um I just I don't I ain't done the joints and the ligaments on the outside of it, so I need to go and get the scans on it and uh, get it confirmed what's happening. But I just I can't run, you know I'm running for 30 seconds a minute and I'm having to stop and I can't do S and C properly. Got certain exercises I'm doing in S and C I can't do because it's hurting. So you know that's a massive part of my program and massive part of my preparation. So. Um, you know, I've made the right move and, and putting it back to make sure I give myself time to get it right and get sorted and and uh, <coughs> make sure I'm 100% fit, you know. Could I probably squeeze then at the 8, 18th of December? Maybe. But there would be massive doubts in my mind whether I was really ready or not conditionally wise and was in the best nick, you know. So I've made, I've made the best decision, you know, make sure I'm right. I want to make sure... I want to make sure I'm writing 100 percent, you know, and if, if that happened to Jack Catterall, I would want him to be in the best shape, you know, because I want to beat the best Jack Catterall there is, not one that's been injured and so no having excuse. to go ahead. So there's no excuses, you know. I want him to be in the best the uh, shape he can be as well. So, um, and I believe he'll think that about me as well, you know. Say, uh, I've made the right decision anyway, you know. Um, as, as I can still box and do some training, but I can't do my runs. I can't do. S and C properly and things like that. So it's been been a bit frustrating that's that it's come along so quickly and put another delay on my on my career again. So aye, it's a wee bit frustrating, but it is what it is. I mean, you work so hard to get them titles off for them. Ring magazine, you're now number five in the world. So to go into a fight, even with a niggling injury, it's is it worth it at this stage in your career to go in there? No, definitely not. You know, I've got too much to lose. You know, um, I've got too much to lose. I had one bad night or going to a fight. Questioning my conditioning and questioning my my fitness because I'm not being able to do certain things and things like that. You know, um, definitely not. Uh, maybe it would have been different if I was um, coming up as a challenger and challenging for my first world title. Then, then me, I would go right. I'll just go for it. You know, I'll do everything I can to do it and just go for it because I'll not have the power to to. It might say okay, and then I'll pull out and I might not get the fight. You know, so. No, definitely, I've got too much to lose, but um, I always want to go into fights that are 100% fit, you know, so I would have maybe, maybe I'd have done it if I was a challenger, but probably not either, because you still want to go in in the best possible shape you can. So let's get down to it then. I mean, the last couple of times I've been in Vegas, I've had the opportunity to speak to somebody you probably yeah. wouldn't mind going out for a drink with, and Teofimo Lopez, he's had some choice words for you. He's called you a pussy, he says that you're scared. Mm. Um, like I, I mean, I, I I put it to him and said that how can he be scared when he's fought Progre, he's fought Ramirez and stuff <laughs> like that. So when you hear these words coming out of Tio's mouth and his, his father's mouth and that, what's going through your mind? Give me that energy, Josh. Fucking clown, isn't he? He's an absolute clown. Um, daddy, man, let Daddy, let my Daddy do all my talking for me. Daddy does all the talking. He's a he's a bigger punk than Tio Fimo. Um, they're both absolute morons, man. Um, Saying I'm scared, saying, saying this, saying that. Why would they be scared to fight him? You know, um, if the fight does happen, I'll happily slap him and bring him back down to earth with a bang. You know, um, but right now he's not on my radar. Um, I've got other things thinking about that I'm doing. I'm going to become two weight world champion myself. I want to move up to 147, fight your Crawfords, fight your Spences, and make more history myself. I can understand what he's saying. And I can understand why he's wanting big fights and stuff as well, but he's going about it the wrong way. He's a fucking idiot. He's an absolute clown of a person, you know. If he was speaking like that to me and I was here, I would, I would slap him that hard. His moustache would hit the tarmac. That thing is, that's what I was going to say, because we've seen him and Devin Haney go out in Fresno about a month ago, and I kind of said to everybody, I would, they would say, oh, would, is Josh going to the Canelo fight? What would Josh do if Tio came up to him and I says... I, had, I know what I'd said, but I would let you tell me what you would do if Teal and his dad came up to you at the Canelo fight or something like that and started talking sort of smack. Like that, they would get slapped. <laughs> they would get slapped, straight and simple. But, you know, obviously you can't go about throwing your hands about, but I would definitely bitch slap him. Because he is a little bitch, he's acting like a bitch and he's actually a complete clown. You said that he's got unfinished business down at Lightweight, which I'm guessing you're saying is Devin Haney since he holds that WBC belt. You don't believe he's undisputed, do you? 
It's a fact. It's a fact. He's not undisputed. The WBC belt is belongs to Devin Henney. He's got the belt. So how can you have a, how can you have four of the belt, three of the belts, and have a franchise belt and call yourself undisputed champion when you haven't fought for the undisputed title? So it's a it's a it's a fact that he's not undisputed champion. And stop calling himself undisputed champion because he's fucking embarrassing himself. Do you respect him in the sense that? He at 22 years old, he went out there and beat Lomachenko. He was the pound for pound number one and number two at that stage. He's went in there and he beat him. And do you know what I mean? And he'd done it in a good fashion. A lot of people never gave him any credit, never thought he would win. So, do you give him respect in that of sense? Course, of course, of course, because he went out there, he had a good win, a very good win. You know, he got the tactics right, he boxed the right fight, he fought the right fight, and he got the right decision. You know, um, so yeah, you've got to respect him. He, he, he took a big fight and a big chance, a big gamble, and it, and it paid off for him, so respect him for that. You know, um, I do also believe, though, that, you know, if, you know, it's all ifs and buts, you know, um, I do believe that, you know, if Loma had started a little bit quicker, you know, and had been fully fit, like what we've just been talking about, um, with injuries and stuff, you know, it, it maybe would have been a different result. I believe if Loma was fully fit, he would have won that fight. But having said that, you kind of take it away from him. It is what it is. He he won and he won well and he, he done well and he got the correct game plan on the night and he won. He was a better man on the night. So I fair play him. He done well. You said that you got your own history to make and you want to become a two way world champion. Uh, Crawford, I mentioned, I spoke to him last month as well and I brought up your name obviously. And he says you're a good fighter. He was very very respectful, but he says he's a different animal and stuff like that. But again. You're a different animal in your eyes as well. Like you are the last undisputed since Crawford and stuff like that. You want to move up to 147. Everyone sees the size of you. You're a big, big guy. So people are actually wondering how you do make 140. So 147 for you is the next natural progression. And since you are undisputed, Crawford is the more organic fight, or Spence is the most organic fight at 147. Well, fights up there, and you, you wouldn't expect anything else, anything else for a fighter like that to say that. I'm to believe in himself. You know, if you had said, "Oh, Josh Taylor's a good fighter," you know that might be a right tough fight for me, or I don't know. And he's in the wrong, he's in the wrong position, he's in the wrong game, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so you wouldn't expect anything else from him. Um, he's a very good fighter. I've got a lot of respect for Terence Crawford. Um, he's he's brilliant, one of the pound for pound best in the in the planet, you know. So yeah, I wouldn't expect anything else from him, you know. He's he, he's a he's a talented, talented fighter. Spence and Crawford, then I mean they got the posters on the wall over there. The big fight coming up. I mean, Porter's a, you sparred Porter before, I know that, a good few years ago, mind you, but you have sport, sparred Porter, and uh, I was hearing good things. Yeah. Uh, so how do you see this fight going? You, you've got a lot of respect for both of them, I'd imagine. Yes, yeah, um, and, and same with Porter. Porter's a, a massive name in the fight game as well, you know, and he is a very, very tough night for anybody. Um, you know, he, he sits on you, he sits on your chest, he gets low, he punches, he uses punches from all mad, crazy angles. He's very physically strong. He makes the fights physical, he's very crude, you know, if he's there, he'll hit you around the side of the, the arms, he'll hit you around the legs, he'll hit you around the back. He, I'm not saying he's dirty, I'm just saying he's, he's just crude, you know, he's just, he makes it a tough night, he's a, he's a tough night, he'll, be, he'll make it a tough night for a lot of fighters. Um, but having said that, he can be, he can be outmanoeuvred and sort of outboxed a little bit, you know, um, so I believe that there will be very tough moments in that fight for Crawford, there'll be lots of you know, hairy moments, I think, you know, and Porter will have a lot of success. But I believe that um, in the end, the boxing IQ and the boxing brain of Crawford will, will pull through and, and get uh, and get the victory, I think, on that one. But it's a, it's a really interesting fight. Another big fight. Uh, somebody wants to be coming to that undisputed character with you and Canelo and Caleb Plant. The Canelo's been a unreal this last 11 months. He's fought, this will be his fourth fight in 11 months. Yeah. I mean, it's unheard of nowadays for a champion to be like that, to do that. But... He's got a tough opponent than Caleb Plant on Saturday night. Yeah. Um, you're here in Vegas, two parts to this question. Will you be going and what's your thoughts on the fight? Yeah, we're going and, um, you know, I think probably Canelo points. Um, but I do believe it's going to be it's going to be tough, especially the first half of the fight. I think I think uh, Plant can outbox him and outmaneuver him um, and frustrate Canelo because we've always seen Canelo struggling with, with people that can box and move their feet well not sort of running away because it does well at cutting the ring off but being clever with their feet and the angles um, we've seen them struggling and get frustrated with, with boxers that can move well um, so I think 
I think Plant can do that and he will do it well, especially early on. Um, so I think I think it's going to be a real good fight. But you know, I think I'm going to edge towards Canelo. But I wouldn't be overly surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if if Canelo got if, if a Plant got the win either. It's quite interesting that Josh. And I've got to say, you were down at the Devin Haney press conference today, man. Were you taken aback by how many? Americans, New Year, Mexicans and stuff like that. I mean, you're almost a big name here than you are in the, U in the UK. Yeah, well, my, my fan base has grown over here now after that last fight. You know, um, a lot of people come up to me today, give me a lot of love. You know, um, a, lot of, a lot of Latinos and Mexicans and Hispanics come up to me and give me a lot of love today. So um, that was that was real nice to see. And, you know, I got a lot of autographs and photos and, and talked to a lot of people today. So I got a lot of love today. So, yeah, and, and recognised quite a lot, which is... Uh, which is obviously from the last fight, you know. So, yeah, love, much love to all my newfound fans. And in America, my fan base is getting bigger all the time over here now, and that's obviously due down to ESPN and Top Rank uh, getting me the the fights seen over here as well. So, yeah, it was it was good. To, it's good to know that you know my my name's getting out there now, and everybody's recognised me as one of the best fighters. One final one then before Pacquiao retired and he fought Ugas. There was a lot of people talking about him fighting you because he's yeah. of all the accomplishments Pacquiao had, he hadn't been undisputed. And I remember you naming your dog Manny. Your yeah. late dog Manny was a, it was a what a dog he was tattooed on your leg. Um, that would have been a dream come true for you, wouldn't it? Because he was your favourite fighter. You idolised him growing up and stuff like that. And then obviously his retirement. So a quick word, on Pacquiao. What he meant to you and his retirement. <clears throat> Pacquiao was like my hero. You know, I had I had a couple of favourite fighters growing up. One was Kozaki. One was Hatton. Um, and then, then I discovered Pacquiao, and then it was Pacquiao. You know, I was Team Pacquiao. Um, so yeah, I, I, I sort of tried to copy him a lot of things that I did in the in growing up. You know, seen me tr copying him in Lock End mm -hmm. back home in Edinburgh, Scotland. So yeah, I used to copy him a lot and try and emulate his style. And um, yeah, just just idolised him. You know, he was, he was a ferocious, ferocious fighter, amazing, brilliant. You know, so. From here, saying he would have loved to have come down and maybe have got undisputed because it was something that he didn't do, uh, was brilliant, you know. And I was, I was lapping it up. I was ready to go for it, you know. Sharing the ring with your hero, man. Who, who gets the chance to, who say that, you know? Who, who? How many people get to say the chance that they've shared the ring with a hero and and won, you know? Because I believe at that point, it wasn't the same Pacquiao, you know. But um, you know. Man, that would have been that would have been brilliant, you know. It would have been Dude, amazing yeah. to to have shared uh, a fight with and shared the ring with, with my hero. That would have been amazing. But you know what he's done for the sport, he's an all-time great. You know, just a uh, absolute animal. So he was. He was brilliant. I don't know if Frank's trying to kick us out of this gym, but Josh, you probably want to get back to the house of your training session. You're probably a little bit jet lagged. Mark's first time. Mark Dickinson's over there as well. His first time in Vegas. In you come quickly. Little quick shout out. There we oh, go. Big Mark. We got him, Big Mark. Big Mark, unit, big unit. Uh, listen, oh, sh see when you see him on Instagram, I thought he was a super bantam mate. He looked tiny, but you, when you look at him at real life next to you, it's like everyone thinks I'm five foot one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You're your first time in Vegas, man. How are you finding it? Uh, good, you know, getting used to the time difference and that. But what an opportunity to come over here and train with the lads. You know what I mean? So just wasn't to be out here. Listen, you're, you've been in the top rank gym and that you, you've you've trained alongside Josh and Lee and stuff like that. you've just made your debut what a second and body shot it was but in Newcastle and stuff like that so you're up and running I mean how excited are you to get that next fight going and uh, I think you're trying to get back out this year right um I'd love to be out in December whether it's going to happen or not, I don't know but I'm ready to go anyways I'm back in the gym I'm training all the time but if it's not December it'll be in the new year Josh how good is this guy he is good he's a machine an absolute machine freaky strong Hits with power, hits with speed as well, you know, and uh, he's only been in the gym a few months, but the improvements that we've seen from him is uh, unbelievable, oh, man. Yeah. He's just going to get better and better all the time. Quickly then, you know, there's, middle, getting there's getting chucked out. You're a middleweight, Canelo's fighting this weekend, what are you thinking? Canelo Alvarez, how can you go against him? Stoppage. Stoppage. Stop. What round? After seven. After seven. Put $100 in it, you're in Vegas, right? So this is the betting capital of the world, Mark. So. Well, you'll, have <laughs> you'll have me skin. <laughs> get, Josh will give you some money. I'm a tight Scotsman, you get nothing for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly, so am I. Listen, guys, thank you so much for the Inside Field TV, and I'll catch up with you soon. Cheers. Cheers.